Hello, this is Dr. Eric Edo. I bring to you Basic Anatomy Game Access Course Part 3. This will be on the musculoskeletal system. Be my guest. So the musculoskeletal system is one of the seven systems we are looking at so far. And this will comprise muscles, bones, and cartilage. And we want to look at the fundamentals of this system. So we will look at some of these muscles, those on the face, one of the facial muscles for facial expressions. We also have the muscles that help with locomotion, especially the move bones, they serve as flexors and extenders for bones to cause locomotion. Then you look at the cartilages and how bones are also formed and the types of bones in the human body and we we'll name some of them as well. So the osteology and body framework, the human skeleton, how many bones do we have in the human body? So you can either guess or make a right answer. How many curvatures do we have in the human body? Okay. So sometimes we say um, some ladies have calves. And men also have calves. We all have calves. Mm -hmm. But these ones are different types of calves. So we look at that. What are long bones? How are they formed? What are flat bones? How are they formed? And then the general functions of the skeleton is so fundamental. It's for support against gravity, which means that gravity is always pulling things down to the earth. So without your skeleton <laughs> body framework, the muscles and the skin especially will just drop down by gravity like a heap of rag, okay, just like a sack without any containment, it just falls and drops. So that's one of the importance and functions of the skeleton. Also for storage, calcium, phosphorus, lipids in the yellow marrow, then blood cell production in the red marrow, protection of soft internal organs like the brain and the heart and the liver and the lungs. It also serves as a lever for muscle attachment and movement, as I said earlier on. When we look at this, that's the cranium, the mandible together forming the skull. That is the clavicle, what used to be called the Rollins chain when somebody undergoes a lot of um, forming for a long time and then you have the muscles actually breaking down so when you look at Al Jazeera and other international news outlets the war that is ongoing in Gaza when you look at the children you can actually count the ribs okay because uh, hunger has caused the breakdown of all the fats and even the muscles are also being broken down uh, into uh, energy forms. So at the end of the day, you end up having only the bones left. It's a very difficult situation. Then that is the sternum, which men usually hate and say they are men. That is the bone there. Then when we talk of the upper limb, we can break it down into the hand, the forearm, and then the arm. Okay, so in the arm, you have the bone called humerus. Then you have the ulna and radius also in the forearm. Then in the hand, you have the carpus, the carpus and then the phalanges. So that's the honor and radius. 
Honor is media and radius is lateral. Then when we come to the lower limbs, you actually have the foot, the leg, and then the thigh. So in the thigh, you have the bone called the femur. That is the patella. Sometimes we call it the kneecap. And that is the tibia and fibula. Then you also have tassels, metatassels, and phalanges. In the hand, we have our carpals, metacarpals, and phalanges. In the foot, you have tassels, metatassels, and then phalanges. Okay. Then the skeleton can be broken down into two main parts. You have the axial skeleton, which will be made up of the skull, the vertebra, and then the thoracic cage. You have the appendicular skeleton, which will be made up of the clavicle, scapula, humerus, ulna and radius, and then the bones of the hand. Then also the sacrum, I mean the ilium, I beg your pardon, the ilium, and then the pubis, as well as the femur, and then also the tibia and fibula, and then the foot bones as well. So they are the appendicular skeleton. Then the bones can either be long, flat, irregular, or even short. Okay, so long bones like that of the humerus in the arm, or even that of the femur. And even the tibia and fibula are also long. Then you have flat bones like that of the skull or the cranium, especially parietal bones, for instance, is flat. Then you have irregular bones like the vertebra. Then short bones like the carpal bones. So the fact that you have different types of bones will also tell you that they are going to act differently in terms of how they cause movements. Okay, so when we, and even joints. So when we get to that point, you will see. Osteogenesis. So as I always say, genesis is the source of beginning. So osteo has to do with bone. So genesis of bones. Okay, so bone formation. There are two main ways. So no wahala, just two ways. You have the intramembranous ossification, which usually occurs in the flat bones, like that of the cranium, okay, like the parietal bone we just saw in the previous slide. So in this case, you have, you know, the mesenchyme, which is actually going to differentiate to form osteoblasts and then osteocytes. So osteoblasts are the young bone forming cells. The osteocytes are the mature bone cells. So that is how intramembranous ossification is formed. It forms from mesenchyme and directly bone cells will start forming the bone. Then you have the second one known as the endochondrial ossification. That one does not come straight from mesenchyme and form osteoblasts and osteocytes. But rather, there is a pre-foundation, and that foundation is the cartilage. So you have a cartilage primordium, or a cartilage laid down first, and this cartilage will in turn be converted into bone. So the cells of the cartilage are the chondroblast, which will be the young ones, which will later mature to become chondrocytes. So anytime you see blast, it is blasting, which means that it is, it is active and ongoing. Then site is like set. You are setting that you are not going anywhere. You are mature. There's nowhere to go. So that is it. So endochondria, that is within what cartilage. Cond has to do with cartilage. So endo, within. So you can see intramembranous bones forming in the cranium. Okay. So you have the parietal bone there. That is the frontal bone. Then you also have the endochondrial bones forming in long bones like that of the femur and then the tibia. Okay, so endochondrial bones. 
Now in the adult, you can see that the entire bone architecture and framework is now um, achieved. Okay, so you have the skull, clavicle, scapula, humerus, the ribs. Obviously, there will be cartilage at the end of the ribs there. Then you have radius, ulna, then the ilium, and then you have the vertebra there with the sacrum. Then that is the femur, then patella, tibia, and fibula, tarsal bones, metatarsals, and phalanges. Remember that as compared to carpals, metacarpals, and phalanges. So in the newborn, you have bone formation, but it's not complete. So in between some of the bones, like the parietal bone here and there, in between that, you have this um, non-bony material. Okay, so that is the anterior portion, known as the anterior fontanel, and that is the sagittal suture. That is the occipital fontanel, lambdoid suture, coronal suture. This particular one that is separating the frontal bone is known as a metopic suture. So eventually, this is going to undergo ossification, okay, and then will be turned into bone. So when a, a newborn is um, tagged at the top here, of the head, you will even feel the breathing pattern. Okay, it goes up and down, goes up and down because the place is not bony yet. Okay, so the pressure of the blood the breathing and pressure of blood in the brain will cause that upwards and downward, you know, pulse, pulsating movement. Unfortunately, our parents think that this place has a sore, so they pour hot water there and they boil the brain advise them to stop it's going to form bone by itself as the baby grows but remember i told you about some curvatures okay so we are not talking about curvatures of the hip and all that but curvatures of the vertebra column okay so we are going to divide them into one two three and four okay we have the cervical curvature, thoracic curvature, lumbar curvature, and then the sacral curvature. So that is the cervical portion also of the vertebral column C1 to C7. Then you also have the thoracic members, which will start from T1 to T12. So the T will stand for thoracic, C will stand for cervical. Then you have lumbar L1 to L5, okay? Then you have the sacral and then the coccyx. So those are the cavities, cervical, thoracic, lumbar, and then sacral. Then the vertebra uh, itself also has different types of, you know, shapes, depending on where you find, find whether it is uh, cervical, thoracic, lumbar, and so on. So this is a typical cervical vertebra with the spinal process and then the body or centrum. And this is a typical thoracic vertebra. You can see also with the spinal process, but you can see that this spinal process is bifurcating at the uh, end there. This one is not bifurcating. Okay, and the body here too is not the same in terms of shape, size. And when it comes to a typical lumbar vertebrae, the body or center is very large. So it has to support all the structures above it, right? And then it also has other uh, structures that will help the attachment of muscles. Because it's just basic anatomy, we don't want to go into too much details. So where two bones meet, you usually have a, meet, a meeting point called a joint okay so let's meet at a joint so a joint is any place in your body where two bones meet joints serve as sites for articulation the types of joints are ball and socket hinge 
joint synovia, joint saddle, joint pivot, joint, among others. So let's look at that. So pivot joint usually occurs within the cervical portion. Then the hinge joint can be found in our elbow, the elbow joint, which in a totally goes one way. You can only bring your forearm upward. You can extend it backward. So that's a hinge joint. Usually it is uh, likened to the hinge of the doors we use in our homes. You can only open it um, one way. Then you also have the condyloid joint, which is occurring in the carpal there. Then saddle joint in the metacarpal and some part of the phalanges as well. Then in the hip bone, you have ball and socket joints. And ball and socket can also be between the humerus and the scapula. Okay. So the femur and also the hip joint or form ball and socket joint. Then you have the plain joint there as well. So that's basic. And then once we talk of the bony part, we have to talk about the muscular part because the bones don't act alone. They need the companion, something to move them. Okay. So the movers and the shakers are the muscles. We have three main types of muscles. Skeletal muscles, cardiac muscles, and then smooth muscles. So as you can see, the skeletal and cardiac muscles have alternating light and dark regions. Okay, so it forms something like a pattern. So we see they are striated because you see things like lines, okay, alternating light and dark lines. But in the smooth muscle, you don't see those alternating light and dark lines. Also, with the skeletal muscle, you can see they are elongated and cylindrical. Cardiac muscles are also elongated and cylindrical, but they branch. So you see that they be moving, then they just branch, okay, and join the other portion. So that is what you see there. Then, um, very distinct of cardiac muscles are the presence of what we call intercalated discs, intercalated discs, okay? So note that. So these are muscles at the back. Okay, notable ones are the one at the buttocks we call the gluteal muscles. Okay, then you also have trapezius muscle, and then you have the deltoid muscle, you have the muscles at the back here, known as the triceps. Okay, triceps baker, and then the front ones are the biceps baker. Then the chest muscles, pectoralis muscle, there are two of them. One is major and one is minor. Okay. We also have the rectus abdominis muscle that gives the six parts. So you can count it one, two, three here, one, two, three here. Some people just have one. We call push to start. But if you have six parts, that is fine. All right. So the smooth muscles are usually found in areas like the intestines and then other places then obviously cardiac muscle will be for the heart then skeletal muscles will be the ones that are tied to bones mainly like all the ones i've mentioned here okay so as i've said muscles can be striated or smooth striated ones are skeletal muscles cardiac muscle smooth muscles are found in the intestines and we say they are fusiform with a centrally placed nucleus then the contraction is slow, involuntary, and then long lasting. Okay. So that is about that. The skeletal muscles are under voluntary control. Okay. The cardiac muscles are under involuntary control. You can't control your heartbeat. Okay. The muscles, you can decide to sit down or stand. You can decide to walk or run. So it's under your own uh, decision. Thank you very much, and I hope this video helps. We will continue with the other parts of the systems, so stay tuned.